What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls. Later on today's episode, we're going to talk and preview the Chicago Bulls' last preseason game against the Milwaukee Bucks. What are some things that I would like to see from the team in these games? We'll talk about all that. Plus, what's going on with the Jay Crowder trade? Could the Bulls still get into those talks as they have now looked at and seen their power forward situation may be a little bit thinner than what they were expecting? We'll get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans. So the Chicago Bulls prepare to play their fourth and last preseason game against the Milwaukee Bucks tonight. And we will have our pregame, our halftime hangout and postgame show for all covering all of that. But coming into this game, there's not a lot to expect. The Milwaukee Bucks, uh, they do play again tomorrow, I believe, in their last preseason game. They are one of the teams that have five preseason games. They finish off their preseason tomorrow on ESPN against the Brooklyn Nets, I believe. Giannis Antetokounmpo has only played in one preseason game so far in this preseason. So I'm not expecting a, a big-time matchup. I'm not expecting uh, both the Bulls and the Bucks to be playing uh, their, their starters heavily or anything like that. So with that said, it really... You know, what I want to see from this game, it would be nice to say I want to see Jack Levine work himself back into rhythm. I want to see uh, DeMar DeRozan and the chemistry and what the starting lineup ends up being, who's going to be the starting power forward, things like that. But we may not see our starters very much at all in this game. And this may actually be a game where we do take a look at the extended bench that we see Andre Drummond play 25, 30 minutes, where we see Alice Caruso play a lot of minutes, where we see Dalen Terry come in and play 25, 30 minutes himself. We may see the extended bench. Goran, who missed last game, does he play in this game? A lot of questions surrounding what we're going or who we're going to see or the, or the lineup that we could see. Now, on the flip side of that, if Billy Donovan is still wanting this team to work on specific things, if there's still some things that he has seen in their game, either offensively or defensively, that he wants to see the Bulls kind of tighten up, we could see the starters play 15 or 20 minutes as well. It's really kind of one of those up and down games. Last preseason game, it, it, it can go either way, just depending on what place your team is in or what spot your team is in. I don't necessarily think that if I had to lean towards one way or another, I would say do not expect to see our starters out there very, very heavily. Like I said, I could very well be wrong with that. I, I would love to be wrong with that in a lot of ways because it's just harder to see your starters. But we do have quite a bit of people on this on this bench or quite a bit of players on this bench that it, it it would be interesting just to see a longer look at. Dalen Terry is one of those guys. Kobe White, who has had one good game, one uh, not not good shooting game, but he did some other things out on the court. So to get to see another look at him, Marco Simonovic, if he's going to get out any at all, Derek Jones Jr., who hasn't played too particularly well either, Malcolm Hill we can also take a look at. So there's plenty of people on this team that if the starters only play or they may start and, and just play 10 minutes or something like that, Still enough that we can look at as we're still trying to work out that rotation, still starting to see what other players have worked themselves into maybe getting a larger role in this rotation. We already know Javante Green, whether it's starting or coming off the bench, whatever's going to happen, he's going to have a big role for this team to start off. Alex Caruso already locked in. We know what he's going to be for this team. And Andre Drummond as well. But seeing those other things, Coach Santos DeCupo, Tony Bradley, like, am I necessarily looking forward to seeing these players play? No, but we could see them very heavily in this game. So looking at that, what are some of the things that I want to see, regardless of who's playing, however many minutes they're playing? So I want to still see this offense stay that motion-based offense, the offense that stays creating shots. Part of the reason why Javante Green has been so good is he's always cutting, right? He's always cutting, which has created mismatches and opportunities for him on the offensive end and easy back at baskets is one of the things that I would have hoped to see from Patrick Williams in this, but Javante Green has been that from the start of the preseason. He's been our second or, or third most consistent player, depending on how you rank him and Nikola Vucevic as, as far as consistency in the preseason. So I really do hope to see that continue. And, you know, the motion of this team, always moving well off the ball, setting that tone early, setting that expectation as a coaching staff for your players to always be moving and cutting. That's what I want to see more than anything else is what Billy Donovan's mindset is, both offensively and defensively. Nikola Vucevic, right, has been a revelation. We we are getting a version of Orlando Nikola Vucevic back, still being the third option on offense. I talked about that heavily, what continuity means for him. But 
considering the Bulls break, considering this is the last time the Bulls get a live game in eight days, we play and open our season on the 19th against the Miami Heat. Considering that that is the, and they'll have practice, of course, between now and then, right? There's, it's not like they're just going to not practice until it's time to pop up and play our first regular season game. But this being a, a, a game against competition, it gets another team to work on some of your things and not just internally, we may see the Bulls may play a little bit harder and maybe their starters let me know down below what do you guys think do you think that the Bulls starters are going to play heavy minutes do you think that they should either way and if they do not who are you most excited about getting an extended look at potentially as we move forward into the regular season still that power starting power forward position Javante Green if we're going based, based off play alone Javante Green is still that right unless Patrick Williams comes in and he's shown some things between uh, the practices uh, this week and in, in the beginning of the season and in this game, it seems like if it's based off that, Patrick Williams may be out of that starting lineup. And how does he respond to that? What does that do for Patrick Williams? Like, we've talked about this heavily. I know it's been talked about many times in bull circles. But one of the reasons, that I, and I alluded to this a little bit earlier, is that Javante Green making the aggressive cuts, right? Not standing still on the perimeter, um, moving the ball, moving without the ball. It's just made the gravity of how, how Javante Green has gotten his offense that much easier. He's been providing a lot for DeMar, for Zach Levine, for Nikola Vucevic, and he's been using his speed, his quickness, and his size, right, and coming in there and being smaller, especially playing that, that power forward position, to his advantage by just being the efficient player and moving and, and just being active and all that type of thing. That's what you would hope to see from Patrick Williams. Javante Green's shooting splits have been crazy. We've gone over that yesterday, 77% from the field, 75% from three-point range, 91% from free throw range, 16.7 points per game. It's a small sample size. We know this, very small. But at the end of the day, he's coming in and producing at a level that you would have liked to see come from Patrick Williams. You would have liked to see maybe come, well, Marco isn't that, that type of mobile player, but it's Jeff, Javante Green's been a revelation so far. But, you know, with the, the, the situation of our, of our starting power forward position, one of the players that Bulls fans have been interested in throughout this summer has been Jay Crowder, right? Could the Bulls potentially trade for Jay Crowder? What would it take to give up for him? I have a whole video on the fact that I don't, what it would take to give up for him, you know, Kobe White, considering he's 10 years younger, things like that, and, and Jay Crowder, while he does provide toughness, things like that, isn't doesn't have the scoring potential and punch off the bench that we would need. But now considering looking at age, hey, looking at what Javante's provided, looking at, you know, what Goran has shown in the game that he played good in, do we need as much of that scoring punch? But it seems like the Suns aren't just looking for a player or a future asset. They're looking to somebody who can come in and, and perform right now for them, that they can plug into the roster right now. Because of that, that may very well price the Bulls, not only out of it because of the assets, but that may price the Bulls out of just not having what Phoenix is necessarily looking for in Jay Crowder. They're still, Phoenix is still a team that's looking to compete. So while theoretically it does seem like on paper, hey, let's give them Tony Bradley, let's give them uh, Marco Simonovic, let's give them Kobe White and try to get that. That's a lot to give up for a player that's on the back end of their, of their career. So what are the Bulls, if they're going to do anything, what could they do to shore up or add some more depth to that power forward position? And I've said this before, and I know this is not something that a lot of Bulls fans want or like to hear, but I don't think it's coming. I don't think it's coming. Now, the one thing, caveat to that, is if they do decide to waive Tony Bradley, I think it's six games into the season where they can waive him and then add a player at the veteran minimum and not go into the luxury tax. If they decide to do that, that would change things. At that point, then you're looking at you're looking at um, maybe going out and getting mellow or something like that. But with that being said, I don't know if the move that some Bulls fans are coveting, the moves that some Bulls fans would like to see this team make are coming. I just don't think that it's coming. And so when you look at Billy Donovan and what he's trying to do and moving uh, Patrick Williams in and out of the starting lineup, uh, having Derrick Jones Jr. there for a game, having Javante Green there for a game, is he's trying to find the best way ways and looks for the players that are currently on this roster. Unfortunately, that does not seem to factor in Marco Simonovic, who clearly has done nothing to really try to try to garner any minutes or anything, a spot in the rotation. So it's not coming. And while a lot of Bulls fans are, 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 are tired of the small ball, listen, the small ball is here to stay. And I think that that's something that also that we need to come and realize in this preseason is that the small ball, regardless if you look at it, unless it's Patrick Williams out there who is a four, 
contrary to what some people would have you believe. Um, with that being said, like the small, like I said, the small ball is here to stay. And we can we can moan and complain all we want, but the small ball is here to stay, barring, like I said, I don't think the trade's coming. We'll see if anything is done with Tony Bradley's contract. It's not a guarantee that it will. And that's the way that is just shaping up and looking right now. That is it. That is the way that things are shaping up. Now, I know there are going to be some people in denial over that or some people upset over that because the front office isn't doing what they want the front office to do. But at the end of the day, that's the way that it's shaping up. And the writing's on the wall for that, whether you want to admit it, realize it, or not. But now with that being said, entering the 2022-23 season, where do the Chicago Bulls sit right now? I've seen a lot of preseason games, and I tell you, some of the moves that people coveted, uh, like, like the Cleveland Cavaliers, they've looked okay. Again, preseason. Let me throw this caveat out there. Everything that I say is with the caveat that it is preseason, and these things could take drastic turns heading into the actual season or changes. Cavs, this one looks pretty good. But what we're seeing is that when they're, both of their bigs aren't on the court, that defense takes a hit big time. The Atlanta Hawks, they've looked okay, right? Again, preseason. This is going to be an interesting season for the Chicago Bulls. And like I said, the things that I've taken away, I went over the positives and negatives that I've seen from preseason so far. There's a lot of positives, I feel, in the Chicago Bulls team. But guess what? Even with that, even with those positives, we still haven't seen a Zach Levine on, on full yet, right? We haven't seen Zach Levine look like Zach Levine, so to say, quite yet. We haven't seen this offense play very many minutes. I'm sorry, the starting five play very many minutes overall. With the start of the season being right around the corner for the Chicago Bulls, it's going to, things are going to get interesting quick. We're going to know where this team measures up very quickly and early on for the season. We open the season. We got Miami, Washington, Cleveland, Boston, Indiana, San Antonio, uh, Philadelphia, Brooklyn, Charlotte, Boston, Toronto, 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 back to back with Toronto, New Orleans, Denver, New Orleans again, Orlando, Boston, Milwaukee. Listen, and that takes us through the end of November, basically. We round out November with OKC, Utah, Phoenix, and Golden State to start December. The first month and a half of this season is going to be very telling for the Chicago Bulls. It's not going to be what we had last season where we were facing a lot of teams that weren't projected to be playoff teams. It's going to be tough, and we're going to see what this team and how this team measures up. But so far, coming out of preseason, I like the motion of the offense. I like the defensive intensity. I like Vooch stepping in and, and, and just being a better player overall so far for the Chicago Bulls. It's going to get tough. There's going to be times where we look at it and say, hey, maybe this team was a little fool's gold. But I can't wait to see. The, the NBA season is right around the corner for the Chicago Bulls. Next Wednesday, eight days away, we get to have fun. We get to break down this team. Can't wait to see. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know how excited you are. Let me know some of the things that you want to see in this last preseason game for the Chicago Bulls. I'm Hayes. Thank you for being the best part of Chicago Bulls Central. Make sure you're following the show at Bull Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a, te uh, a text and our voicemail, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We're the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. And like I like to end every episode, go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Break, Break, Break Media. Media. Media.